We are now in the, what's known as the Bedford Barrens. <clears throat> it's located in the Bedford area of Nova Scotia, Canada. The town is all surrounding this area down below. The basin, the bay, Bedford Bay. Uh, here we have a placard dedicated to um, a couple of stone carvings that were carved by the Mi'kmaq people back in, I guess, the 80s it was first discovered. Um, I'm very pleased to see this placard here because I uh, served on a committee at that time that brought about the protection of these two stone carvings. The name of the committee was the Bedford Barons Petroglyphs Advisory Committee. I was uh, one of three members making up the team, the committee. The chairman was Len Groucher, Groucher if I can say that right, of Bedford, Nova Scotia. At the time Peter Kelly was the mayor and I was requested to serve in this committee and so I did. Here's some of the stone services where the Mi'kmaq would carve all kinds of stones, not necessarily here, but in various places around Nova Scotia. Animals, trees, you name it, they would carve it. Names. <clears throat> um, it was a committee that lasted for two years to bring, to bring about the protection of what we're going to look at here in a few minutes. The two carvings here in the Barrens that were carved by the Mi'kmaq people. Um, we eventually did bring about the protection of these cliffs. They've been dated to be, I believe, about 500 years old. Uh, unfortunately, I'm looking at a lot of wear. I think what's going to happen here, these will disappear in time. Um, there's an AI here. I think I don't recall ever seeing that on this stone carving when we brought about the production. I'm positive of that. You look at the original tracings of this. Um, you won't find those there. Here's the other group over here. Now, there are ways to bring this back to life with water, shadows, the sun, the angles. Um, you know, they might look really worn here. They always did appear to be worn or not that visible. So, um, there are some beautiful photos on the internet and at various other places that bring those two glyphs back to life. So, I'm very pleased that I had a, a hand in that and bringing about a boat from 1992 that I moved from that point to British Columbia. Um, I spent many, many hours up here examining these cliffs. It was very seldom I'll show myself Actually, I've never shown myself in any of the videos that I've done, but I guess I should put a face in this story. I got a bit of a sore throat, so that's not helping matters. I don't really like the camera on myself, because the story is not really about me, but I thought maybe this time the two folks know who the voice, the face behind the voice. There's not much left in my voice. Seeing where I traveled to Austria in 2010, this may be my fifth or sixth trip back and forth. I, this could be my last trip. So that's why I'm making this video. I'm going to spend a bit of extra time. You can see a fall coming in here. And uh, here's what the actual tracings look like. Other than this one, there's no letter, what appear to be an A or a V, Roman numeral 4. It's not there. That was added later, unfortunately. That's damaged. And there's the man, Petroglyph. And I'm not, I'm not going to read into what he might mean or might not mean. I'm going to leave that to the Mi'kmaq people. And uh, I, I'm just not really interested anymore in trying to apply it to North Africa and all these other places, Knights Templar and everything. This is a universal symbol. 
Even Leonardo da Vinci used an eight-point star. Some of his designs. You'll find this Knights Templar and various ones have used that up through the ages. So it's universal. Uh, to attach that outside of the Micmac framework, I'm, I'm just not interested. These are Micmac carvings. I'm going to leave it at that. So I'll just take you on a small tour here. I'm pleased to see this path that they have installed, which is really great. Things have come along a long ways. I would like to see guardrails and more things over top of those cliffs. And there may be a sign, do not touch, do not walk on, because um, they're going to disappear. Here's a bench they put in, which is great. And here's your typical rock surfaces. They call them humpback whales. As you can see, they're gray and look like a whale's back that you're walking on. And a bread loaf, I think that was another one, raisin bread or something. And uh, so I just want to give you a feel for the Barrens area. I just love this place. I love the gray walk, rock that is in the, the greenery. And you can go along here and there's some beautiful uh, pieces of rock down further, but that's far enough. Um, Bedford is a beautiful town. I to tell you the honest truth, it's the most prettiest town I've ever lived in. You have the basin, the water, brooks, lakes, everything you can want at your fingertips. But uh, I'm living in Austria now, and that seems to be my home. There's no need for me to move back. I'm very pleased with Austria. But uh, the thing I love about Nova Scotia, it has end endless mysteries in it. As you may all know, I made a number of discoveries. Back between 1985, when I moved from Truro to Bedford, and I uh, brought to the attention of the public what is known now as the Bears Lake Mystery Walls. Um, I found various stone carvings around Bedford. At the time, I thought they were all ancient, but since then, it's been proven basically none of them are ancient. So, you know, that's how it goes. It took a long time to prove uh, more about these uh, Mi'kmaq carvings. It took years to confirm that they're basically about um, 500 years old. They determined that by the lichen. They can measure it, I guess, down in the grooves, as long as no one scraped it away. Once again, it's unfortunate. If I had some water, I'd probably pour it on there, but still, I don't think you'd see too much. I think there needs to be something put around this. A circle guardrail. I'm telling you, this is going to disappear. Dr. Stephen Davis, back in the 90s when I was here, working on the committee, he put in the paper that these should be buried after he did a study. He said they should be buried under a pile of soil. Well, I mean, I didn't think much of that idea, and I still wouldn't really want to see them buried, but um, I see his point. No one could walk on them or touch them or anything. So it's really, you know, if they're under the soil like that. So you get other names, Caribbean small ones here. Local people lived here over the years. A little hard to make out with the right kind of sunlight. But that would be my recommendation today. I think there should be a railing right around this. A government sign stating this is protected by the Nova Scotia Government Special Places Act. And for anyone damaging these cliffs could result in a heavy fine. So I don't like to mention such like... <coughs> negative things, but I think something has to be done here. We are looking at, as far as I'm concerned, we're looking at glyphs that have worn down quite a bit since 1990. Well, once again, with the right tools, the right shadows, the right sunlight, water, uh, these can be brought back to life, they, you know, make them more visible. So we can take another short walk here. And uh, I think that's about it. There's no need for me to add any more to this story. Um, once again, this could be my last trip to Nova Scotia. But you never know. Things can change. 
Please be working my favor again to make another trip. But I want to make this a little extra long, uh, just for the sake of capturing the environment that the Micmac lived in before 1492 and after, of course. But before that time, this was all their land. They worked with the land, they lived with the land, and if that was the way now, we wouldn't see the polluted land that we have around us. But, you know, that's the nature of people. There's a need for work, a need to build things, a need for industry. So, that's how it goes. So we'll just walk our way down to the other plane going over. To the black curtain, we'll, we'll call it a day.